Luxury. Easily one of the fanciest words in the English language. It instantly calls to mind diamond rings, solid gold toilet, and of course, luxury cars. Today, I'm going to show you nine cars that were super expensive when they were new, but now you can find them for less money than the cheapest new car available in the U.S. at this time, the Chevy Spark. Slap on a monocle and chug a whole barrel of caviar because it's time to get fancy. This is... <laughs> Big old thanks to Cove Speakers for sponsoring today's episode of The D-List. Okay, so you guys know that I bought a new old car and it's got a Corolla copia of leaks and issues currently running on two cylinders. That means I've been spending a lot of time in my garage, gas station, side of the road, dealing with some of these issues. It's been a challenge. Do I love the car? Yes. Do I regret the purchase? No. No. One thing that has helped me through is my Cove Speaker Commuter 2. It's awesome because I can just beep, beep, boop, connect Bluetooth and crank up some tunes. It's great because it's water resistant. So when I'm out cleaning my driveway to get rid of all the oil stains, I don't have to worry about my speaker getting wet. But the coolest thing about the new version of this speaker is this. Freaking breaks in half. Now you can separate the left and the right channels. And when they stay together, they create a 360 degree sound round sound effect. Click the link in the description or head over to coveaudio.com slash donut64 and you will get 64% off. Now, back to the show. I just want to start off this episode by saying, uh, while these cars are cheap to buy, none of them are cheap to own. Nothing is more expensive than a cheap luxury car. Moving on. Maserati Quattroporte. Italians know two things. Pasta and luxury cars and art. And I think they invented democracy. Uh, let's just say that Italians probably know a lot of things and I should learn not to generalize any nationality down to just one or two characteristics. So it's my bad. We are growing together, you guys. So let me start over. Do you want to own a Maserati? Of course you do. Well, today you can get a fifth gen Quattro Porte, AKA four Porte for cheap. Not a bad deal for a car that retailed for 95 large when it was new or $125,000 with inflation. So why so expensive? Because Maseratis are marketed as both luxury and performance vehicles. The Quattroporte has a 4.2 liter V8 coupled with luxury sedan feel on the sides and back. It's like the opposite of a mullet. Party in the front. Business in the back. But don't expect to only spend $11,000 on this car. The biggest problem with this big old boy is it's immensely complex drivetrain, which is very difficult to repair. That said, when it is in working order, the Quattro Porte can go zero to 60 in five seconds and tops out at 171 miles per hour. So that's a spicy meatball. I have learned nothing. BMW 750IL. Question. Who's classier than 007, Mr. Jake Bond? Answer, not a single person on this flat green earth. And the super spy himself drove a BMW 750IL in the classic 1997 film Tomorrow Never Dies from the golden era of Bond, the Brosnan years. The 750IL was the top level of the E38, produced between 1994 and 2001. Not only was it stocked with a 5.4 liter V12 with 322 Hurspers, it also was the first BMW to come with a TV. In the very first vehicle period with curtain airbags, trust me, there's nothing more luxurious than not dying. I not died last year. Back in 2001, these German driving machines retailed for $92,000. That's over $134,000 in today's money. But, now, you can get them for like 5,000 bucks. And it's not like some 20 year old aging old people car. I think the E38 is still one of the coolest looking cars ever. It's aged incredibly well. I love them. Surprisingly enough, you can even find the next generation, the E65 for pretty cheap. Maybe that's because this particular car was not known for its reliability or its efficiency, but the styling and comfort still hold up even 20 years later. And that's the most important thing for you, me, and Bont. Jeff Bont. Mercedes S-Class. The S-Class, or as I like to call it, the S-Class, is one of the most awarded cars ever. We're talking multiple car of the year awards from places like JD Power in US News, not to mention honors like best luxury car, 
safest passenger car, European car of the year, and more. Heck, I wouldn't be surprised if someone gave the S-Class a streamy for best sports channel, just like we got last year. Oh, the S-600 budded in 1999 as the highest performance car in the S-Class history with an MSRP of 134,250 doll hairs, which would be over 200 grand nowadays. It's got a 5.5 liter V12 twin turbo motor with 493 horsepower. This car was so loaded that it even came with its own website. According to Car and Driver, a 2001 S600 included your own personal web page on mbusa.com. And the things it did are hilarious and very rich guy. You can track stocks, news, sports, weather, rich guy stuff. I never understood the weather channel. Just go outside. <laughs> and that site could be downloaded and displayed on your dash screen, making the S600 one of the first internet connected cars. Guys, this is before we had all the, the watches with the smart watches and tablets. Today, smart shoppers can find a used S600. Well, I wouldn't say smart. Today, brave shoppers can find a used S600 for 13 grand, which ain't cheap, but also ain't bad for one of the highest end sedans in the history of cars. And if you're if you're Michael Jordan, then you're going to get a return on your investment because his just sold for like 200 grand. You're probably not Michael Jordan. If you are Michael Jordan and you are watching this, slide in the DMs. Let's hang out. Range Rover Sport HSE. This car is easily the most luxurious way to drive through a lake. <laughs> <laughs> These mammy jammas have serious all-terrain power, maxing out at 503 hertz per. Plus, they got an air suspension system that allows you to change the ride height for off-road. And Land Rover's patented terrain response system offers custom chassis and transmission settings for five different landscapes. Road, grass, mud, sand, and heart. I got a Captain Planet haircut now. Problem, as with many of the cars on today's list, this Range Rover is notoriously unreliable. Actually, just about every Range Rover is notoriously unreliable. Check out Range Rover enthusiast forums and you'll find a million questions like, what's this noise mean? What's this warning light mean? What's this explosion mean? But for all the problems you might run into, it's still a Range Rover, which is the car that actual rich people drive. And the high trim interior detailing on the HSC absolutely puts competitors to shame. When the Sport HSC debuted in 2004, it was $72,000. But these days, you can get it for less than 10. Not bad, Gromit. Audi S8. Picture yourself in Neckarsulm, Germany, okay? It's a small hamlet in northern Baden-Württemberg. Here you are, you're just eating a schnitzel. You're drinking a Doppelback. You're wearing leather shorts and you drive an Audi S8 because that's the only place that they make the Audi S8. If you ask me, German words are funny and easy to say. Also, if you ask me, Audi is a fancy rich guy German car. The S8 is a jazzed up version of the A8, Audi's flagship sedan. It's got some sportier features like firmer suspension, bigger wheels, it's got ceramic brakes, and they budded in North America in 1999, the same year as Woodstock 2, for $65,000, which would be Pretty much exactly $100,000 today. But now you can find an early 2000s S8 for eight to 10 grand. And Audis are generally thought to be some of the more reliable luxury cars, which makes a used S8 a good deal. Porsche Cayenne. Ooh, that's a little spicy. What is it? Cayenne, baby. When the Cayenne debutted in 2001, some people thought it was dumb for Porsche to make SUVs. They said an SUV just couldn't be a true P car. To that I say nay. It's never dumb for any company to make any car unless it blows up because cars are awesome and there are never enough of them unless they blow up. Luckily, the doubters were soon proven wrong because the Cayenne turned out to be pretty super duper. All right, Business Insider called it the uns <laughs> they're not German, the undisputed king of high performance SUVs. In a sport utility market dominated by American and Japanese brands, suddenly there was a Porsche to compete with. But the Cayenne has depreciated a lot more than other Porsches. Despite the original MSRP of 89 grand, you can get a mid 2000s Cayenne Turbo for like 8,000 bucks. Compared to the same year 911s that sell for close to 30 grand. There are a couple reasons, okay? For one thing, Porsche produces about twice as many Cayennes as 911s, so there's just more of them. For another, 
a lot of Porsche enthusiasts just don't want a Cayenne, okay? It, it doesn't scratch their itch. If they do want one, they're gonna buy a new one, which by the way, if you have a serious case of Porsche itch, you should call 911. VW Phaeton. The Volkswagen Phaeton was only sold in America for a glorious three year period, that golden age known as 2004 to 2006, when I was supposed to be in college. VW created it after Mercedes introduced the new low cost A-Class, which was a clear attempt to compete with Volkswagen's offerings like the Passat. And because VW already makes luxury class vehicles under the Audi badge, when Mercedes tried to horn in on VW's family market, it was easy for VW to say, oh, hell nine. The Phaeton had a ton of luxury bona fides, including a draftless four-zone climate system that Volkswagen actually invented and patented for this vehicle. But the real icing on this little cupcake was the W12. This is the same engine from the VW Nardo concept we talked about a few episodes ago. And it's also the same engine from the Bentley Continental, which is a very, very fancy rich guy car. But much like Quibi, the Phaeton was a huge expensive failure in part because VW priced it comparably to more established luxury brands. And no one wanted to spend a good jillion dollars on a Volkswagen. In 2005, it's second model year, they sold only 820 Phaetons in the US and only 21 in Canada. So they stopped selling the Phaeton in North America altogether. And because no one really ever wanted this car except for me, now you can find them for a fraction of the original price. But I really, really wouldn't recommend actually buying one, especially when you consider that Chevy Spark comes with built-in Wi-Fi and it only costs $14,000. And I'd like to reiterate, this episode is not sponsored by Chevy. I'm just saying W12s are cool, but look at how scary these timing chains look. Rolls-Royce Silver Spirit. The Silver Spirit was the last car Rolls-Royce made before the company was purchased and relaunched by BMW, and it was a doozy. Talking ultra luxurious, ultra spacious sedan fit to carry the Rolls legacy. It's got all the interior flair you'd expect from Rolls-Royce, including a walnut dash, seats that are either all leather or, if you're naughty, velour. Yes, you can have a car that is exactly as comfortable as my Fenty tracksuit. Perhaps most uniquely, it was the first Rolls with a retractable hood ornament. They made Rolls Royce's famous Spirit of Ecstasy statue spring loaded so it would retract into the hood in case of a fender bender to protect it, or in case hooligans like Nolan try to steal it and glue it onto his car. The Silver Spirit comes with Rolls Royce's famous 6.75 liter L410 V8 under the bonnet grommet. This engine has the second longest production run in history and you can still find it in brand new Bentleys today. I know this is a Rolls Royce engine, but the two companies weirdly are intertwined. If you wanna learn more about it, check out uh, the episode of Up to Speed on Rolls Royce. I'll put the link in the description below. And while repairs can get extremely expensive, this car is famous for its durability. Find one without any major problems, they can last for 500,000 miles. I don't know if you're in, into math, but that's half of a million. Nowadays, you can find one for like 14 grand. You're getting an absolute steal. Just make sure your garage is big enough because this thing, the standard one is 17 feet long, which is very long, but still almost an entire foot shorter than the car that Nolan has parked at my house. Toyota Century. Can you believe that a Toyota is at the top of our list of luxury cars? I can't, and I'm in the freaking video. But the Century is straight up a masterpiece. And that is the reason why this is the second time it's crested the top of our D-list. A sign of the Toyota factory calls it the best car in the world, and that might actually be correct. This land yacht is called the Century because it was created for the 100th birthday of Sakichi Toyota, who was the father of Toyota founder Kaichiro. It's even the official car of the Emperor of Japan. Each car takes six weeks to build, and only four workers are qualified to work on the Century's paint, which is required to have a mirror Finish. New ones today are $180,000, but what's even crazier is that Toyota chooses 
who can buy one. So even if you have $180,000, you're still not, you still might not be able to get it. But here's the thing. Thanks to the 25 year import rule, you can buy an imported Century for under $10,000. This is literally one of the most coveted cars on the face of this flat green earth, but is super cheap in America because nobody here knows what they are. So my friends, it's up to you to take advantage of America's ignorance and go get yourself a banging car that happens to be a little bit nicer than a Chevy Spark. For their latest line, Chinatown Market has collabed with legendary 60s rock band, The Grateful Dead, and you can't have a Grateful Dead collab without a VW bus, and that's where we came in. If you watched last week's episode of Money Pit, then you saw Zach Job and our friend Dan bust their booties trying to put this van back together. In honor of that van, Chinatown put together this sick t-shirt. It's only gonna be available starting at 3 p.m. on Saturday and ending at 10 a.m. on Monday. So set your alarms. Head over to thechinatownmarket.com to grab this piece of history. Guys, I am so freaking excited about this. There are no words. Chinatown is very cool. Buy all of these shirts so we can do more stuff like this. Hit that subscribe button or I'm gonna tell your teacher that you're doing video conferencing from bed. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at James Pumphrey. Follow Dona at Dona Media. To learn more about Rolls Royce, check out this episode of Up to Speed. And to learn more about the W12 engine, check out this episode of Bumper to Bumper hosted by one of my best boys, Jeremiah. He's one of the best boys in the world. I love you.